Welcome to another interesting video with fun and unknown facts. Hope you will enjoy the video. Let's get started. Please do subscribe for more videos. This is the Shanghai Tower, the second tallest building in the world, finished in 2016. Its exterior is made up of over 20,000 pieces of glass each in a different shape, so it always looks a little bit different depending on the angle you look at it from. Young Qingxi Shanghai, but some say that this design is part of the reason why Shanghai Tower became a failed building. Marshall Strabala, chief architect of Shanghai Tower, I would say that the person who said that doesn't know what they're talking about. My name is Marshall Strabala, I'm the chief architect of the Shanghai Tower. Here's why the design became controversial. Shanghai Tower has faced a myriad of problems. Most notably an astonishingly low occupancy rate. There were several reasons for this. The building's twisting glass facade, ideal for offsetting wind loads, created an impractical floor plate, forcing tenants to pay for large areas of unusable space. Before we get into the actual occupancy rate, let's take a closer look at why some might consider the design impractical. The tower has an innovative double-skin design, which means that this right here, inside the triangular exterior, is the actual floor plate. Marshall Strabala, chief architect of Shanghai Tower, I thought the controversy was more around the rounded shape of the building, which is less efficient than a square floor plate. But the rounded shape is the only way to make the building work as it does. Yang Qingxi Shanghai is this design really such a negative for Shanghai Tower? See, the triangular and round double skin is a deliberate and calculated design choice. While it sacrifices a degree of office space, it's necessary for some of the building's unique innovations. The extra layer makes the tower a supersized thermos bottle. As a result, Shanghai Tower uses 50% less energy than average to maintain its optimum temperature. In January, when outdoor temperatures drop to around 7 degrees Celsius, the air inside can reach 14 degrees even without central heating turned on. Second, the twisting shape reduces the wind load by 24%. That's important if you're going to build something this high in a typhoon-prone area. Marshall Strabala, chief architect of Shanghai Tower, we try to make the building unaerodynamic. The fancy word is disorganized vortex shedding. If you picture an airplane wing that is designed to create organized vortex shedding to lift a plane in the air, if you were to take the wing and twist the wing of the airplane, it will never fly. The same thing is the Shanghai Tower. That twisted form creates these disorganized vortexes around the building that it breaks up the wind. Marshall Strabala, chief architect of Shanghai Tower, so we estimated it saved about $80 million in construction costs, which then paid for the second skin. Marshall Strabala, chief architect of Shanghai Tower, so you see this rounded wall. And then the core has all the elevators, stairs, and things that you need for a building. Now, this core is about as efficient as you could get, because if you look at Jinmao, Jinmao is half the size of this building. But the core is almost identical in size to the core of Shanghai Tower. And yet, low occupancy rate is painfully obvious at night, when half the tower fails to light up. Pause right here. Most of these are not in fact office spaces, but a luxury hotel that will soon open. GU Jianping General Manager Shanghai Tower Construction and Development Company. The hotel occupies 84 to 105 floor and will open in the fourth quarter of this year. As early as 2018, the building was half empty. But that was 2018. What about today? GU Jianping General Manager Shanghai Tower Construction and Development Company. Currently our occupancy rate is already over 70%, which meets our expectations. Yang Qingxi Shanghai four years into operation, has Shanghai Tower failed? It's probably too soon to say. Yang Qingxi, CGTN, Shanghai. No private company in the world would be able to build a tower this wildly expensive and lease so little of it. Despite pushing the very limits of engineering and being widely praised for its design that has undoubtedly made it an iconic symbol of China. Shanghai Tower has seemingly fallen short of becoming a monument to the country's economic success, standing instead is quite the opposite. Please do subscribe for more videos.